the channel. I hope you're doing really well. As you can see, we're out and about and uh, I've got the Pano Bridge Mark III in for review. So uh, what I want to do is give you a really good representation of what sort of images you're going to get out of the uh, device, um, depending on what night vision you've got on and what you would see through these two devices. Now there is one disclaimer, I'm doing it through lens articulation so I'm not going to be using both of these devices to look through two different cameras, adjust them accordingly to give you the best image you are most likely to see. What I'm going to do is give you the image that your brain sees. You can see here I've got two Tantos and we are running in the uh, 65 degree angle. I think it's a 10 degree pan or a nine and a half degree pan. Very, very lightweight RPO3 glass, really streamlined setup. You can pan them back, you can have them down and then you can have them up out of your workspace if you need to, just like so. Have them up and about, inboard, storm like that really really good to go so yeah so guys i hope you find this useful if it does let me know by dropping a like a comment or if you want to keep up to date with what i've got going on just hit that subscribe button but guys let's get into it so this is our first location this is um, by the river and in distance you've got an industrial zone and you've got a vehicle bridge so i'm just gonna pan the camera around for us So this might be if you're observing an area and all the way in the distance is um, a town, local town. So again, when you're scanning, you've got a nice wide field of view there. So again, really, really useful. So location two guys and we are another river location but we are facing uh, an industrial zone a little bit closer up and I thought I'd bring you here because it's pretty interesting. Um, it's a pretty dark night tonight and uh, just for all you maritime guys and girls, nice little Russian submarine diesel electric class. It's a small one. Just for the extra interestingness. And right in the distance, all the way over there somewhere, you've got a another different uh, small I think it's technically a city over there, um, but yeah, you might be observing some boats. Um, the opposite side of the river is about 400, 500 meters, just for your awareness. So yeah, it's kind of the image you're going to get. Uh, there's another bridge over there and that bridge does have rail traffic and vehicle traffic which you might be able to see little uh, clip for funsies guys don't say i don't bring you anywhere it's a very very old english castle hill so the real deal and just to give you an idea of a field of vision so um we're about um 100 meters away from it so uh gives you an idea of the scale if you're looking at a large building um, you can see what you can roughly achieve. Guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really well. I hope that intro serves as a, uh, a good sort of representation of what this can offer. So if you haven't guessed it, this is the uh, Pano Bridge Mark III. So it's the third iteration from Noise Fighter. And basically it's a bridge system for uh, two night vision devices such as like a PVS-14 or in my case, to Nocturne Industries Tantos. So, uh, we're gonna be going through uh, the kind of the features of it. Uh, let me just whip it off the bridge for us. 
so we can talk about what we've got going on here. So um, we've got two Tantos, Nocturne Industry Tantos. We've got some very, very nice uh, Rochester Precision Optics um, glass and also uh, Nocturne Industries lightweight diopters. So all in all of this setup I've got going on here, I've got a bridged um, binocular night vision device um, that weighs in around about 480 grams. Um, super, super lightweight. As you can see here, it's very easy to uh, have it out of the way. You can bring it into your field of vision just like so to run them as binos but the big difference here if you look is you've got a really really nice um 65 degree or i think it's nine and a half degrees roughly uh fixed pan so basically the mark three to the mark two is you have this fixed bridge here so that you can't muck around with it so that the uh, visual representation through the field of view is always the same irrespective of what you're doing with it. Now, a really nice feature of this, you can see here you've got some uh, hex, um, I think they're a four mil or five mil hex, but basically you can remove this and um, take off the bar here at the back, to show that, and um, basically you can run these in standard 40 degree field of view straight ahead. So that will give you a, uh, a conventional binocular night vision setup. So um, basically what we've got going on here is that it's up to you whether you want to run a, a mono or um, binocular. Obviously when you do uh, attach it to the helmet here, you can um, decide to maybe flip one up. If you want to use one eye, flip them both up so that the um, device is down but out of the way of your field of view. Or you can flip them up in the stow position uh, inboard of your helmet just like so, to keep the weight away from your neck, your helmet, um, and make it a little bit more towards the rear, so much more comfortable. Likewise, if you're getting in and out of a vehicle, or you just want to flip one side up, or both sides up as you're doing the task, all you've got to do is bring them down into the sort of ready position. And then underneath here, you'll have your... Um, where your head is basically you've got a complete uninterrupted field of view so they might be because you might be shooting or doing something else um, what I found here with the setup is with it seeing 65 degrees that extra um, field of view is massively useful so you would have saw in the intro um, that basically what we had going on there was a um, and I want to clear this up for everybody as well is that we have a augmented view um, through the use of cameras in order to show you what the visual, visual representation is that you get from both these devices when your brain does all the magic and adjusts it to, to what you see with both your eyes. So what I had going on is my nice camera. Um, I've got a 35 mil lens, which gives you a 65 degree field of view. And then I have brought it into a, a representation of what you'd expect to see through one and then two and then your brain merges the images. I did try and do it with um, both devices, different GoPros. I set them up on um, uh, some wood just to make it come in. I tried so many different ways and when I edit the actual footage, it just didn't look good. And it doesn't really help you guys to sort of understand what the advantages are between 40 and 65. And for me, that wasn't really good enough because I wanted to give you guys um, the best information to help you guys make the best informed decisions because it's really important night vision is really expensive so when you're looking at something like this uh, you've got the Tanto device one of these I'm going to probably run you depending on your location so I'm in the UK so night vision is a little bit more expensive than it is in the States um, and I'm an ex-US citizen so I kind of understand about prices of stuff and gear etc but um, one of these is probably going to run you probably three to four thousand dollars depending on the spec of the tube that's inside and most of the cost of this is going to be tube prices as most people know when they're dealing with night vision so when you've got one of those you've got two of those you've got the bridge mount shroud helmet lights lasers etc etc et the cost is compounding it becomes very expensive and with all those things considered you have to decide that if you're already in, an owner of a pvs 14 and you're getting on fine with that, depending on what you're doing, whether you're security, law enforcement, military, or you're using the hiking, um, home protection, 
etc air softer what you might have well be um, or you just like it because it's super cool and it's a technically a superpower so being able to see at night if you're one of those people and you think actually I can get by absolutely fine with a PBS 14 and I just need a J arm and I'm good to go absolutely more power to you I did that for many many years and then I decided that I want after having used a uh, I think it was a mark 1 or a mark 2 pano bridge I just was completely blown away by the performance the only thing I didn't like really was the weight because when you've got two BPS 14s a bridge and all of this in order for you to be able to see I found it was really heavy so and that was one of the reasons why I was kind of annoyed with my PVS 14 I just found it really heavy so um, when I discovered about the RPO glass being so light the lightweight diopters and then when the Tantos came on the market and I got my hands on one I was so impressed with it so hence why this kind of was fixed in my brain that I actually wanted to have a panned um, binocular setup that I can use like this all the time and this is how it stays um, when I'm going out uh, and really it's up to me if I decide to um, just flip one up because I might be shooting or I might want to just be able to see passively with my natural eye or bring them up say for example if I'm driving but it's a lit area I turn my tubes off drive then I don't I have less I got more headroom in order to drive turn my head talk to passengers etc etc so currently the mark 3 prano bridge uh, and this is the polymer version there is going to be a metal version coming out if it's not out already um, so this one is around 375 bucks uh, it's around 415 British pounds in Europe I'm not sure but depending on conversion rates and if you do have a local distributor but I think the European distributor is uh, Phosphor Knights in the UK um, they are a supporter of the channel do thank them and they help us out with some bits and bobs over time so again check them out if you're in the UK I will put them in the bio description really got great guys there and in my opinion in the UK probably the only custom legit night vision builder um, that I have seen personally so I wouldn't trust anybody else <clears throat> when you're spending that much money you want the right stuff the right equipment and those guys know exactly what they're talking about so for me this system uh, roughly weighs with batteries two tubes everything you see here um, well everything you see here is around about 480 grams I mean even holding it like this it is so light um, you can see that it's really really nicely made it's solid it doesn't shake there's no wobble it's just rock solid it's just impressive when you hold this you think god this is a light system I mean there are lighter bino systems but they just don't have the flexibility that I would consider important um, you know whether you want to just run one two one up flip up 40 degrees 65 degrees this this kind of covers um, everything if I'm honest and um, yeah, it just offers so much that for me for what I do if I want to make a video with one use the other give one to a buddy give one to my wife it just has a massive amount of um, flexibility um, you've got redundancy built in as well so if you have got a bridge if you've got a bridge system you've got two batteries two tubes etc if you do have a uh, conventional binocular system it will generally run from one power source so if you lose your power source for whatever reason the battery goes down um, standard binos have a reduced battery life so if you're using the CR123 batteries which is what these are uh, they generally run about 20 odd hours uh, with these um, you're going to get roughly 40 hours if not more depending on your light situation um, these are auto gain tubes so if you're in a very dark area the gain will be higher it will use a little bit more battery life and likewise in a more urban setting a little bit lighter caught half moonlight say full moonlight area the battery is going to last a little bit longer it just depends what you're doing and likewise um, you've got redundancy built in so it's really cool and for me that was really important as well again having more options than less is far better um, and certainly one is none two is one and I live by that principle and it's uh, done me in good stead so 
So really, who and what are these designed for? So again, someone like myself, where I had a, I had a PVS 14, it was a little bit heavy, a little bit of an older design. I wanted to update it, make it fresher, lighter, faster. Combine it with another one, I was lucky to find a match tube that was pretty much identical specs. So I bought the tube and then decided actually I want to run a bridge system just like this because of its lightweight, how adaptable it is. I can run it in 40 and panned. And also gives me the redundancy so I can run just one, two, etc. So really, really important to me and I think super great feature especially if you're doing firearms work in law enforcement military the advantage these give you over a standard bino setup is massive it can't be overlooked and the quality you get out through uh, this kind of setup is uh, is remarkable it really is so guys if you've got this far into the video do help me out and if it's helped you drop me a like if you want to stay up to date with the latest things we've got going on just hit that subscribe button obviously i want to thank all the new subscribers that we've got going on everybody that's linked into the channel um i don't know of anybody else in the uk that's doing these kind of views of this particular stuff so uh i'm a bit of a rare dog in the uk but um I want to shout out all my American friends and family. Hopefully the uh, video at the start helped you out and helped you understand um, a little bit more about panoramic night vision. Maybe you're like, you were like me, you had a PVS 14 and uh, you wanted to sort of increase the options you had. Maybe you've got two, you've got an old one and a newish one. You're thinking actually, I just want to bridge them and be able to uh, do a little bit more. Maybe you hiking, maybe you're, um, navigate at night or doing like I said law enforcement military work security work that kind of thing and you want to be able to have that extra field of view to make your life easier when you're at work but also have the option to just run one give one to a buddy have a backup have redundancy um, and overall have more options at a uh, equivalent price so guys that's it uh, take care and I'll uh, see you on the next one